everyone, Andrew here, and welcome to today's video where we're going to be looking at another one of my World of Nintendo cabinets, and this is a personal favorite of mine because it focuses all on Nintendo stuff from the 80s, so of course NES, Famicom, and Game & Watches, so I just love that decade of Nintendo when they really kind of first stepped into video games. Uh, I think it's probably my favorite Nintendo decade to collect for, just because look, there's so much cool stuff. You get all the Game & Watches, and again, you know, the NES just had so many incredible things to collect for it that I've loaded this entire cabinet up with stuff just from that decade, and I hope you enjoy uh, seeing it and potentially learning a little bit about it as well. Uh, of course, anyone who's been following my channel for at least a couple months now will know I recently did a project called the 30 days of Game & Watch where I literally took 30 of the Game & Watches from my collection and every single day played and demonstrated one of them on video. So if you're interested in that kind of thing, definitely go back and check out that project. Uh, but yes, I do own 35 out of the about 60 Game & Watches ever created. So I have over half of them there and they take up an entire shelf uh, on my uh, World of Nintendo cabinet plus some uh, because they kind of have spread to some of the other uh, rather shelves as well. Uh, and just like all the videos where we look at cabinets in my collection, I will be taking that camera off after I'm done kind of giving my basic overview here. We're going to get a nice close look at just all the things hidden on these shelves. But of course, as I said, I absolutely love the NES. So I've just over the years, especially when it comes to the NES, tried to just get as many interesting things as possible. I don't just go for the games. I'm also all about, you know, crazy accessories and memorabilia from back then and just, you know, anything that just stands out to me as something really cool. Uh, and I think that's over the years, it's kind of been, you know, uh, a bad thing for me as well. Because, you know, unlike someone who just says, I'm going to go for a complete set of these games, and then they do it, uh, I've always been all about, you know, just finding those odd things that other people have probably never even heard of. And they're like, why would you ever collect that? Uh, so you're probably going to see some of that in here as well. But overall, uh, yeah, I hope that you enjoy it. Uh, it has boxed NES consoles on top, boxed NES consoles in a cabinet underneath, which you probably can't see right now. But again, once I take that camera off, we'll get a nice close look at that. Uh, and one of the coolest boxed NESs in my collection is the NES. NES 2, the top loader, uh, that being complete in box is not something you see too frequently because it came out pretty much after the Super Nintendo was already out and Nintendo's last ditch effort to kind of get some NES sales. Uh, but not too many people were worried about that, of course, because everyone wanted an SNES at that point. I also realized there's probably kind of like a glare up here. Uh, you just can't win. I mean, you know, I can open up the glass a little bit, but then still you'd only have one half. But again, I'm going to get that nice close shot. Uh, of everything with the camera after once we take it off the tripod, so I hope you're looking forward to that. Uh, other things in here, of course, include Rob. You can't talk about uh, 80s Nintendo without talking about Rob. Uh, big box Gyromite has become very rare in recent years, and while I don't have stack up, unfortunately, uh, complete in the box, I do have the Japanese version, which is kind of like the cop-out way to go, uh, because all the pieces uh, in Japanese stack-up are exactly the same, and they're compatible with your North uh, American Rob, uh, except the little plastic pieces that stick into the slots around uh, Rob the Robot here are white instead of gray, so it looks odd. But otherwise, the little discs that he picks up and moves are actually identical to the ones that come in the North American set. So if you're ever missing one of those, uh, potentially look to getting a Japanese copy and, you know, just take it out. No one will ever know. It'll be our little secret. So. Uh, moving down from the top row, which again, we'll talk a little bit more uh, once we actually get up there. Uh, this is my main Game & Watch shelf, and I've just loaded as many Game & Watches on there as I possibly can. Again, I have 35 in total, so you'll get about almost 30 of them on here. You get one up there, and another five or so down here. Uh, and they're just so much fun to collect. I just, I just think Nintendo was so creative and so innovative back then. Uh, and it's so neat, you know, again, as anyone who's watched my Game & Watch videos will know, how you see so many things from Game & Watches inspire later Nintendo products, like the multi-screen Game & Watches uh, becoming, uh, you know, like the Nintendo DS, or the Versus Micro System ones kind of inspiring the Switch in a way. So, uh, yeah, if you are interested in Game & Watches and want to learn more about them, I definitely have a lot of content in, uh, related to them on my channel, which I hope you enjoy. Uh, this right here, some people may ask why I have two NESs stacked on top of each other, uh, and that is because one of them is the European version, which I made a video all about back in the day when I found it in a completely convoluted way where I wanted to, uh, to buy it from someone, and they said, no, only if you buy this massive lot of stuff, and I didn't really, you know, want to buy the whole lot. It was actually really expensive. It was a really lot of stuff. There was some cool stuff in it, but uh, it was just kind of too much for me at that point, so uh, he wouldn't sell it to me separately. And then maybe a few weeks later, I went to a video game store where this guy had just sold a whole bunch of his stuff off to, and I ended up buying the European NES from them. So I got the exact same European NES I saw a few weeks earlier 
earlier, but I had to buy it from someone else. Uh, completely crazy story, but I absolutely love having that. I love how it actually says European version on the front. As you can tell, just from first glance, that it's different. Uh, and then the NES underneath that, that's kind of yellow, and you might be like, why, Andrew, do you have this, you know, not that great of condition NES uh, in this incredible shelf? And that is because that is my parents' original NES, the one that they had before I was born and that I grew up on uh, and played, you know, just so many games for the first time on back in the day, like Star Tropics and Mario 3 and Mega Man 2. Uh, so I've always kind of kept track of that NES. And even though it's a little yellow, little kind of beat up, uh, it just is so important to me. Uh, and of course, you know, my video game history that it deserves a spot in the shelf here. Now uh, moving on to the left a little, again, it's not, uh, you know, necessarily the games and such, but you have so many neat accessories like uh, the original NES Zapper in an actual separate box. And that's the thing about Gyro Mike 2 is that if you bought the deluxe set of the NES that included Rob, uh, it would have then come with Gyro Mike in that kind of big bundle, and it wouldn't have had a separate box like that, which is why it became so rare over the years, because the only reason you would ever buy that is if you actually bought an NES that didn't come with Rob, you bought Rob the Robot separately, and then you had to buy Gyromite separately as well. Uh, so the Zapper's kind of the same. You don't see too many, like, Zappers in the boxes. Most people have bought, um, uh, what is it called? Uh, the action set. <laughs> Too many NES sets, and I actually do have a comment to make uh, soon about we're going to look at a whole bunch of the different NES bundles in my collection. Yeah, you got the, the power set, uh, the action set, the deluxe set, the challenge set. Uh, I love NES bundles. Yeah, we're going to be looking at all those. There are three actually different box variations of the deluxe, uh, not the deluxe, I'm a reaction set. <laughs> uh, again, uh, yeah, we're going to be talking about all those probably not necessarily in this video. You will see them in my cabinet in this video, but uh, we'll be getting to those soon. But yeah, so if you didn't buy the action set or even the power set, because again, it, uh, or the deluxe set, so pretty much the gun, the zapper came with like almost every NES set back in the day. But if you somehow did not get one of those sets, or maybe you lost your gun or something, you could still buy a separate, uh, an individual one. Uh, and that is the box for the gray version of that. I do also have uh, down in the case below, uh, the orange box for that as well because of course they changed the zapper's color uh, eventually. Uh, beside that you get uh, two NES controllers in the box which is pretty cool. Pretty much every single bundle of the NES included two controllers with it you know by default which is really neat. Uh, so you didn't really have to like go out of your way uh, to buy extra controllers but why you'd want two extra ones is like A I guess if you broke them or lost them uh, but B if you got the NES satellite which allowed for up to four players uh, getting two more controllers would be, of course, a great thing, and that is still sealed. And you get Arcanone in the box. Uh, not, I mean, it's official. It has the uh, Nintendo seal of quality on it, but I believe it's Acclaim uh, who makes the wireless remote controller. We actually looked at another set of uh, NES uh, wireless controllers on my channel a few months back, and unfortunately they don't work super well because I think they're like, they're infrared. Uh, so, you know, it's kind of it kind of works like a, a VCR controller where if it's not pointed perfectly at the receiver, it doesn't really work. Uh, so that's not so great. And we have a tabletop Game & Watch. In my collection, I have at least one Game & Watch of pretty much every series. Again, you know, the multi-screen, widescreen, tabletop, micro versus system, um, the super color. There's just so many uh, cool different Game & Watches. So I'm happy to own a wide variety of them. Moving down, though, a little bit less about the NES is we have things like the Super Mario Brothers phone that I've reviewed on my channel. We have things like uh, Nintendo-themed cards. Uh, the Hanafuda cards are, of course, a prize from Club Nintendo. So you'll find the odd thing in here that's not, uh, you know, necessarily from the 80s. Like, that's a rare thing. And also, uh, the uh, NES Classic Edition is, of course, I think 2016 that came out. It's crazy to think that that's already, like, five years old. Uh, it doesn't feel like it's been around that long, but, uh, wow, time is just flying by. Other things like Aladdin Deck Enhancer. Uh, and then, you know, Power Glove and such, some, some accessories. And then the bottom shelf down here is kind of like all dedicated to Famicom, uh, which I love Famicom stuff. I think that Famicom is just so neat. It's so cool to see where the NES came from, but uh, Famicom is just so mysterious. And it's just like, you know, it fits how foreign it really is, you know, to uh, being from another country, another part of the world, uh, where the design looks nothing like the NES. Some of the accessories are just really out there. You get really cool things like the disc system, that while I absolutely hate dealing with it and hate dealing with discs that stop working and belts that break, uh, I just think it is so cool. But I, again, I'm really happy that we didn't have to deal with that in North America. Things like the 3D system, Famicom 2, uh, Famicom keyboard, you know, just all these cool accessories that we never got in North America. You do get to experience them if you kind of dive into the realm of the Famicom. So again, we're going to look at all that stuff close up. Uh, and then one more thing is just uh, if you look down, you will see that there are a whole bunch of boxed NES sets uh, in the kind of lower cabinet, which you'll get a better look at once I take the camera off. So hope you enjoyed that kind of crazy... Uh, 
you know, me going over everything in here. Hopefully you can see it okay. Uh, um, but yeah, so I'm gonna take that camera off the tripod and you're gonna get a much closer look at everything in the cabinet. So let's go. What? This isn't what I said was going to happen. Uh, no, actually, there was something I forgot to mention, so I've had to come back and film this part, so uh, hopefully that's okay. I know that my you know videos aren't known for being the most professional thing ever. I just hope that everyone has fun and learns something. So uh, thank you for being here, despite the fact that you know this isn't like Documentary Historian 101 going on. Uh, but what I want to talk about uh, is that when we look at the kind of close-up look at my shelves right after this, you're going to notice that the labels on the front of each shelf say Nintendo with kind of their newer gray logo rather than the red one and Wii. And that's obviously because the shelf right up until I bought it was actually used in a store to sell Nintendo products. So it would have been branded and modified to represent whatever the most recent Nintendo thing was at that time. And obviously, you know, the Wii is not really representative of what the world of Nintendo shelf would have been selling back when it was new. Of course, NES and maybe even Super NES and stuff, uh, it just kind of kept getting used at Zellers from that point because they were probably too cheap to buy a new cabinet. Uh, but what I have in my hands right here is actually back in the day, an official box that would have been sent to retailers to brand their Nintendo shelves. And it's the correct label that kind of represents more of what Nintendo was doing back in the 80s. Uh, and as it says right here, uh, they are officially actually called shelf talkers and they would have come in boxes of eight. So let us take one out here, so you can get an idea of exactly what it is we're looking at. And these are just so nice. Like, obviously the shelf would look really nice if I put these on, but I just can't. I can't, you know, take them out of their original box. Uh, they are just so beautiful. And it's even 3D. The Nintendo part's actually bumpy. Hopefully you can kind of see uh, based on the glare there. Uh, and there's adhesive kind of stickers here that if you peeled it off, uh, I could stick them onto the cabinet, but yes, this is more accurate to what, you know, a World of Nintendo cabinet selling NES products would have looked like back in the day. I don't know, you know, if they at some point ripped these off and put those wee ones on, that would have been like a cry. These are just uh, so beautiful. But yes, so please uh, don't ask why, you know, it says Wii on the shelves, despite the fact that there's, you know, 80s Nintendo stuff in there. Uh, that's just because that's how the cabinet was when I got it. And despite the fact that I'm so lucky to have been able to get my hand on these, uh, I just can't do it. I can't put them on the shelves and take the adhesive tape off. So uh, with that said, I'm gonna stop wrecking your immersion now. Sorry for all you video purists out there and back to your original programmed video. All right, and here we go. Uh, hopefully I understand that the top shelf here had a little bit of a glare uh, and there wasn't much I could do about that. So hopefully now you'll be able to get a much better look at it, but uh, it is indeed the cabinet lit up from a fluorescent light in the top, which kind of just gives everything a really cool glow. Uh, on the left over here, we have an official plastic Nintendo Entertainment System sign that would have been used for advertising back in the day. Got the laser scope back there. I'll open this cabinet so get a clearer look. Uh, we finally get to look at these things. There's again that uh, you know, NES 2, uh, the top loader complete in the box. We get the box in Game & Watch, which has kind of found its home up here. Uh, this is just like a ceramic Mario that somebody made. I found at the thrift store one day, and it's, you know, it would probably get broken pretty easy if you ever got tipped over, so I figured uh, keeping it safe in here made sense, but whoever made that, good job. It actually looks pretty darn nice. Uh, up here, these are my sealed NES games. I don't uh, keep them with my other box NES games. I've always just kind of kept them in here. Uh, it's cool to see things that are still sealed from over 30 years ago now. I mean, of course, Dragon Warrior is like not that big of a deal. There was a bajillion of them made, but you know, Crystal Mines, not an official game. Uh, I just enjoy having sealed stuff. Uh, Action 52, an extra copy of that that I had, and the Game Action Replay. Uh, of course, this funky thing. Uh, I made a video about it. You can do some pretty interesting things with your NES games with that. Uh, and then, as I said, here's that you know big box Gyromite. So you can see how thick it is there. Has all the different pieces inside that you need to play Gyromite with Rob. And then here's the Japanese version of a stack up or the block game, uh, which again has pretty much the uh, exact same pieces as the North American version in there, except that they're a little bit of a different color uh, in terms of the plastic pieces that stick into the side of Rob. Here is my Game & Watch shelf. It goes all the way down there and yes there's pretty much like 30 game of watches on here including the club nintendo re-release of ball and the recent uh super mario brothers 35th anniversary 
Game & Watch. It's pretty tough fitting all these things on here, but as mentioned, if you are interested in Game & Watches, uh, my channel has more than enough Game & Watch content at this point, uh, so please feel free to go check out uh, my gameplay videos of pretty much every single uh, Game & Watch you can see right now. Uh, there's a video about it on my channel. Uh, one that there's not a video about, though, is a very recent pick of mine, and that is the Mario Cement Factory tabletop version, which is really neat. Uh, these things are just so cool. I've always wanted to get my hands on one, so I'm really happy that I do now, uh, and you can probably expect to see a video about that on my channel soon. Uh, once again, there's those remote uh, controllers I was talking about. Arkanoid in the box. I picked that up at the Midwest Gaming Classic 2017, uh, and it's just I think that is so neat to own that. It, of course, comes with this controller. Uh, so, you know, we can actually play it like traditional Arknoid, which is pretty cool. Moving along, we have the sealed two controllers. A couple more Game & Watches, or rather a few more. That zapper, as I was talking about. Let us scooch back over to the other side here. This is probably one of the, the coolest things in my collection. It's really interesting. Uh, you need this adapter if you want to use the NES Game Genie in the top loading NES because otherwise the Game Genie will not fit inside the cartridge slot. So you could just, I guess, you know, call into the uh, uh, Comerica and uh, the people who made Game Genie and order that at uh, this piece so you could use your Game Genie on the top loader. But not many people did that, so it's actually a very obscure item these days that I'm super happy to own. And once again, here are those two NESs where you can clearly see that uh, it is the European version. I love owning things uh, from other regions, especially consoles. I like trying to own like a console from uh, North America, PAL, and Japan. Uh, for pretty much everything, so I have done that with NES, and this is just a copy of Excite Bike that anyone who watched my uh, video about cartridge converters inside of cartridges will know about, and this is just one I always keep here, uh, because it has an uh, Famicom to NES converter inside, uh, so it's just easy to keep track of it like that. Coming down here, again, this is kind of the more memorabilia section. We have the Mario phone I've talked about before, uh, some vintage Super Mario uh, related pins that I think are very cool. Uh, here is a watch, uh, not technically considered a game and watch, but it is like a mini game that you could have on your wrist. And this is the Super Mario Brothers one. There was also a Mario 3 one. Gotta get that back there nicely. Uh, again, here's those Hanafuda cards, a sealed Aladdin deck enhancer. Uh, these are just some cards that you can buy back in the day and they would have like tips and, and secrets in them and stuff. And uh, these are the kind of cards that you find in there. Uh, this is uh, actually a complete set of those cards. Uh, so uh, those ones are just kind of what they look like when they're still sealed. And then you get the power glove. And these are the uh, the wireless controllers I've reviewed on my channel that just do not work very well. So steer clear of those. Uh, unless, you know, maybe you'll have more luck than me. Who knows? You get the NES 4 score. Again, just like the satellite, except the satellite was wireless. And the NES Advantage control stick, uh, which a lot of people likely know about. Moving down to the Famicom row. I mean, again, as I said, get that Famicom keyboard, which I think is just super cool. Uh, it's a shame, again, that there's, you know, so many accessories that we didn't get in North America, but I guess, uh, you know, what we got was pretty good. Here's kind of like a quick history of Mario uh, in Japan. We get Super Mario Brothers 1 on the Famicom, Mario 2 on the disc system, and then Mario 3. Uh, but of course, Mario 2, uh, we kind of got that modified version of Doki Doki Panic as the Mario 2 uh, outside of Japan. Here is an official family computer. Uh, and here is a fake one. This one is just like the uh, computer and game. It's a knockoff. Uh, and there was actually quite a few knockoff things, like another one right there, a kind of yellow Famicom. Uh, so you always have to be kind of careful when it comes to the Famicom stuff, because there's a lot more unlicensed things for it than pretty much you know, any other Nintendo console out there. Uh, some more disc things, official Nintendo Player's Guide that goes over a whole bunch of NES games that were out at that time. Uh, here's what the Famicom looks like. This one's a little bit yellow. The one in, my, uh, in the box is much nicer and the disk system. And then moving along to the right here. Apologize for all the uh, the glass shifting. Hopefully you understand. We got things like the 3D system. So for games like Rad Racer, where you can just wear 3D glasses in the North America versions, there was actually like a 3D system you were supposed to wear on your head uh, that made the games look 3D instead uh, that existed in Japan. But they just made it instead, uh, you know, like the red blue 3D type when they were localized here. And this is the Japanese version of the Arkanoid controller. Instead, it is blue and green, where in North America, it was uh, gray and black. And this right here is one of the Game Boy releases 
uh, of an NES game. I just always kind of kept it in there. It fit the whole theme of the uh, the Japanese games. Then moving on down, you do get, as I mentioned, those kind of NES bundles, where I have pretty much every single NES bundle ever released, like the power set, which has the power pad, the zapper, two controllers, and the cartridge, which includes Mario Duck Hunt, uh, World Class Track Meet, and, uh, yeah, Mario Duck Hunt. Uh, and then down below, you get the challenge set, which came with Mario 3, the control deck, which comes with nothing. I uh, get the deluxe set over here, as mentioned, which comes with Rob, uh, along with Duck Hunt and the Zapper. And you get the sports set, which comes with a uh, uh, World Cup, uh, Super Spike V-Ball, uh, four controllers and the NES satellite. And then there's the original bundle down there that came with the action set, Mario Duck Hunt and the Gray Gun, uh, which is pretty darn neat. Uh, let's see what else we can find down here, too. Now, one thing, uh, this one's kind of hard to see. Yeah, so here again, you have a box four score and a satellite in the box. Uh, we'll just take this one out here. And here is actually a complete box of those cards. Uh, so that's kind of neat. So if I ever really wanted to like do a massive unboxing of them, uh, I actually have a sealed box to that. I don't think they're like this really that sought after or, uh, or desired or anything like that, but I think it's cool uh, just having that sealed box. Uh, and then again, on top, you also get a few sets as well, like some other variants of the action set. And as mentioned, I do want to talk a little bit more about my boxed NES collection just because I love them so much. Uh, I think what I'm going to do in the near future is I'm actually going to get all these boxes out. And we're not going to do like unboxings of every single one, but I will be going over uh, all of them and what they include and maybe unboxing one or two of them. And you really get a feel of just what, you know, console bundles looked like back in the day. Because again, I'm pretty sure I own... I think every single NES bundle ever released. But with that said, hope that you enjoyed seeing my second World of Nintendo cabinet. This one probably being my favorite one, uh, just because it includes so many of my favorite things. I absolutely love collecting for the NES. Uh, and yes, please let me know if you have any comments about any of that. Uh, and you'll know, be happy to answer them down below. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed that. Look at my World of Nintendo cabinet 80s edition and hope to see you next time for something different. So thanks and see ya. Thank you so much once again for checking out my videos, I really appreciate it, and if you enjoyed, please consider leaving a like and subscribing as it really helps my channel out. With that said, hope to see you next time.